what's up? I'm here with uh, my good friend Brandon. We've known each other for a um, few years now. He's a criminal defense lawyer in Orlando, Florida, but I'll let him give some more of his background first. Yeah, hey, Jalen, I'm glad we could uh, make this happen, man. But my name is Brandon. Um, for those of you that don't know, I've been a deputy sheriff in Orange County. I uh, did that for a little over three years. I was a prosecutor for the state of Florida between Orange and Lake Counties for a little over three years. I've been doing criminal defense for about uh, 10 years now. All right. All right. Um, and of course, I'll be already known, Janet Trigger Trainer, um, started Trigger Trainer Academy a few years ago. We focus on concealed weapon classes, private lessons, and kind of really educating the public just about concealed carry laws, and um, a lot of things they just need to know in terms of firearm safety as well. I got Brandon on because um, our career paths and our fields really overlap in terms of firearms and the people that get charged with firearms or just have you know, any kind of criminal, criminal um, cases at all. So hopefully I'm going to use him to kind of break down a lot of the questions that I can't answer. I don't feel I have the authority to answer that you all ask me. Um, and I'm going to hop right into it. One of the biggest questions I get asked is adjudication withheld. So someone texts me, they're like, hey, I had such and such happen 15 X years ago, but it was adjudication withheld and can I get my concealed weapon license still? As a criminal defense lawyer, what is your law understanding of that? Yeah, as a criminal lawyer, we get that question a lot also. So adjudication versus adjudication withheld is a... Um, an area where people do have a lot of questions, right? So when you're charged with a crime, if you're convicted, either through uh, you take a plea or you're found guilty at trial, the judge then has to sentence you. At sentencing, the judge is either going to adjudicate you guilty or withhold adjudication. Mm -hmm. So if you're adjudicated guilty, you're convicted, right? Okay. It, could be, it could be on anything from as low as a traffic ticket to a misdemeanor all the way up to a felony. Yep. Okay, adjudication means you're convicted. Adjudication withheld means the judge withholding conviction. So. Um, that's a really important distinction. Heard. So, obviously when people get, once they are convicted, they start to lose rights and then things start taken away from them. So can you explain like having your rights taken away or starting to lose rights in that process? Absolutely. So if you're adjudicated guilty, that means you're convicted. If you're convicted of a felony, that's when your rights start to really get taken away. Okay, you're gonna lose your right to vote, mm -hmm. your right to serve on a jury, your right to own a firearm. You're also gonna lose um, you know other rights as well as far as being able to seal or expunge that case or any other case either prior or subsequent to that adjudication of guilt so okay. there's a lot of there's a lot of implications all right so once it's like a felony charge then you start to really so if it's a misdemeanor charge you don't lose as many you really don't lose any rights with a misdemeanor adjudication of guilt okay. um, so with a misdemeanor conviction adjudication mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, if you apply for a job, you're gonna have to put that on the application. If they ask you, have you ever been convicted of a crime? Uh, you're gonna have to say yes. If you get a withhold, technically you haven't been convicted. So mm -hmm. that's a little- um, That's another that's question a, I get where they say like it was withheld or like something right. like that. Okay. Right. Absolutely. And, um, and so again, another important distinction. All right, is there an order you start to lose rights in? Like, I know, so a lot of people ask me about clemency. I know it's eight years after served time, you can start to get your firearm rights back, but a lot of people get their voting rights back beforehand. So is there an order or hierarchy that you lose and regain rights? You know, that's not really an area that I practice in. So fair, fair. That's not, I'd refer that one out. <laughs> no, I don't, and I do a lot of that to you guys where I'm like, you ask me, I'm just like, yeah, I, I don't know. And that's kind of the best thing to do is when you don't know, don't make it up. Just be like, right. I, I don't you, know. You, you want to find someone who specializes in that area. Absolutely. Cool. So if somebody's had adjudication withheld, um, so they they weren't charged, are they allowed to get their concealed weapon license, or how does their firearm rights work with that? Right. So if you're a convicted felon in Florida, you cannot own or possess a firearm. Okay. If you do, that's a violation of the law. It's a felony. Yep. Um, if adjudication is withheld, however, you still have that right to own a firearm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's really important for people to understand. Okay. And. Let's say somebody hasn't been, they might be in the process, right? So we've, we've had a couple of those where we've had people there in the process and going through the court legal systems, but they haven't been convicted yet. So is there, what are the options for somebody that might be in some predicament, but they haven't been convicted? I would recommend waiting and seeing the disposition of your case. Okay. okay you don't want to go through all the steps, pay the mm -hmm. money, take the time, effort, and expense to go through the process if you can't own a firearm anyway. The most important thing I would say, put your effort into winning that case. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say winning, I don't mean necessarily getting it dismissed, I mean avoiding an adjudication of guilt. If you can get the withhold, that's a win. Okay, okay. Um, another question I get asked, let's just go right into like talking about traffic stops with police. So your person, you don't need a license to have a firearm in your car because we're considered a dwelling state in Florida. Um, but all the time we see people get pulled over and then suddenly the police has to search the car. They're like, I'll work with you because you know I want to be a good person. 
then they get charged with possession of a concealed weapon in the end. How should somebody navigate that? What are their options? As a former police officer, I can tell you the police are not always your friend. They don't have to have your best interests like a lawyer yep. would. So um, it's an adversarial system, right? Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, it, as a general rule, it's usually a good idea to be kind and courteous with the yep. police. But it's also important to know your rights as well. Mm -hmm. Um, having a firearm in a, in a vehicle is a very gray area. It is very subjective. Um, yes, obviously we have laws on the books and it's codified in a statute, we can all read it. Um, but even the police, you know, will interpret it differently based on their own beliefs and backgrounds because yep. at the end of the day, we're all human. Yep, and I always tell people, I'm like, once you see that like, if they're trying to search the car, you just feel like they're trying to violate your rights, I'm like, let them win. Like, don't try to argue, just like call Brandon on the back end and then let them win in that moment. Sure, and and of course, I mean, obviously, it's important to know your rights. Um, the police, in an automobile, they need uh, probable cause to search, mm -hmm. right? So without PC, they cannot get in that car unless there's some other exception, like consent. That's mm -hmm. what you just talked about, yep. letting them get in the car. Um, that's a personal decision if, if you want the police to search your car. Um, obviously, if you're just concerned about the firearm, you have a concealed weapons permit, it really should not be an issue. Heard. So just as, and if you can't give this opinion, feel free to say you can't. Do you feel like you should give consent or do you feel like you should not give consent? It's a case by case basis. Case by case. Yeah, I can't, so there's not one broad thing. It's like, uh, people always ask me DUI, should I blow or not blow? It's yeah. a case by case, I can't yeah. tell you. That is that is um, completely fair. Let's talk about medical cards and concealed weapons permits because there's a large argument against this and a lot of people are on one end or the other. My personal opinion is like, since we're a shall issue state here and no one's really checking, if you go get both, no one is gonna stop you. Um, I know some people in the 2A community pose the, you know, the worst argument of like, you'll be convicted if you actually end up in a situation, but then there's no actual defense from the criminal defense side. So what is your perspective on having both? In broad strokes, I'd say if you ask my personal opinion, I mean, having a medical marijuana card, it's um, having a card for like a prescription drug. You have prescription drugs, um, whether it be uh, Xanax or mm -hmm. hydrocodone or whatever, painkiller. Um, you can have a prescription med. My, most people in this country are on prescription meds, yep. and they're still allowed to have a Second Amendment right to own a firearm. So, um, personally, if you ask my opinion, I don't see the problem with it. And do you think on the back end that a judge might find you guilty if somebody was trying to attack you and take your life essentially or harm you, great, cause great bodily harm? Do you think they would find you as a criminal on the back end for being a user of marijuana, even if it's with the medical card? Uh, well, there's a good argument to make that should be inadmissible at trial um, without getting too in the weeds of the rules of evidence and everything. So um, I think there's a good chance that may not even come into play. Heard. Um, let's start to talk about standard ground. We are a standard ground state here in Florida. Um, I always tell people, I'm like, it became very controversial at the Trevor Martin George Zimmerman. I feel like I naturally have a biased opinion since I'm an instructor in the community. I don't think standard ground is the issue. I just think the way Florida lawmakers wrote standard ground is the issue. Um, what is your opinion? Like many laws in Florida, they're not well written. Yeah. And you can see that in the standard ground motion, in everything down to traffic laws, okay? <laughs> just, for some reason, the Florida legislature can't seem to get it right a lot of times with uh, codifying these laws, putting them into words, and uh, having them interpreted by the courts. And so, and that's where we find ourselves many times. Is, um, and that's why it's such a big deal in the media, mm -hmm. right, and with the courts, because it is open to interpretation, like the case you just cited, yep. you have people on both sides of it. Yep. Um, Another question I get asked a lot, people that have out-of-state charges that try to come to Florida with their concealed, or want their concealed weapon license, how does that, that is an area I have absolutely no idea. So, yeah, like we discussed before in Florida, if you're a convicted felon, you, know, you can't have a firearm or ammunition. If you have an out-of-state um, felony charge, Florida most likely is going to treat that as a felony. So, so as a general rule, if you have an out-of-state charge, the state of Florida is going to look at it and say, if that had been committed in Florida, those acts, would that qualify as a felony? Most yeah. of the time, the answer is going to be yes. All right. All right. So what, let's go this to, so if somebody, let's say it was a, we'll just go felony first. If it was a non-violent felony, because I always get the distinction between this. Some people say non-violent, you could still get it. If it was just drugs or something like that, or if it was a violent, like a robbery, you know, they do take it away. If it's been 10 plus years on a non-violent felony, do you have any different understanding in terms of their firearm rights? without even getting into the duration of the time, just the premise of the question, um, I think is a, a bit erroneous just because um, any felony conviction mm -hmm. is gonna take away your right to own a firearm or ammunition. So um, whether it's a violent or non-violent, really is kind of a non-starter. Yep, heard. Um, let's talk about getting the rights back, clemency. I get asked that question all the time. I refer people to the Department of Corrections you know, website. Clemency is free to apply for, you just gotta print out the paper. 
get the clerk documents and you know give it to the judge essentially um try to talk about clemency walk some people through the basics of it. i know most lawyers always talk they're like i'm not doing it and for the rightful reason of like it is free to do you don't need to pay me x amount of money i mean that's absolutely right i think anytime a lawyer is probably going to do it just a little bit better mm -hmm. um, personal is not something i specialize in but um i agree with a lot of attorneys say it's not something we do. They try and refer it out. They say, you know, this is something you don't, you don't need a lawyer for. Save your money. Do it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, I would, as advice to people, if you hit the roadblock and you feel like you can't go any further or you just don't understand, then it's probably time to hire a lawyer. Her, her, her. Um, talking about lawyers and hiring one, um, paid lawyers versus public defenders. Now, I've had some people that I know they've gotten hemmed up with some, you know, possession of a concealed weapon. I was like, hey, call. And they're like, no, I'll just go get a public defender. And I was like, eh, teach his own, but, you know, there you go. What's your opinion versus? I'll start this by saying public defenders are lawyers. Okay, so a lot of people say, should I get a public defender or should I get a lawyer? Well, they're both lawyers, okay? Mm -hmm. The main distinction is um, how do you want that lawyer to work on your case? Public defenders could be very good. Um, however, they're burdened with huge caseloads. They don't have the time to speak to every client. I mean, try calling public defender's office and get mm -hmm. on the phone with your attorney. It's probably not gonna happen right away at least. So. Um, I would tell people that you only have one shot at this, right? You have one crack at it. If you don't like the outcome of the case, that's probably it, right? Yeah. Unless you have some kind of appellate grounds, which you probably don't have. Mm -hmm. So I would say if it's a matter of your future and your freedom and your liberty, why not put up a little bit more money, get it done right the first time? Yep. Because once it's done, it's done. Yep. Um, what about the affordability? I think that's a, like a lot of people's like big wall. They're like, I can't afford a lawyer, but even when I had to use you for some things, I was surprised by like the options that I had to actually get you to work for me. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Most attorneys, especially in the criminal field, do want a flat rate. We don't charge by the hour. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's really important for people to know going into it. It's not an hourly thing. So it doesn't matter how mm -hmm. long it takes to work on the case. Um, the other thing I would say is as far as options, uh, most attorneys do offer payment plans. I know we do yep. as well. Uh, we just ask for a certain amount down. You can pay as you go kind of thing. Yep. And that is a great Thing for it's a win-win right yeah because it allows us to you know get paid for our time and our efforts and our yeah. experience and but mainly and more importantly it's a, the client can have access to justice where they otherwise wouldn't have it not a lot of people have you know X amount of thousands to put up front. exactly, exactly. let's be realistic so um, to de deny people a good criminal defense for that purpose I think um, most lawyers don't want to do that and they want to help people yep I agree like I think when I use I think the down, I mean, I can at least talk about that. The down was like only 300 bucks, and I think it was like a two, maybe another 300 just like each month or 200 bucks. And it's like that's a car payment, it was super affordable for you know, I was working a ten dollar an hour job at the time too, so like yeah. I could still afford it on that. And it, it depends on the case, but absolutely, we yeah. just try and work with people. All right, um, how can people educate themselves more about law? Like when it comes to firearms, I always tell people, like, go to USCCA website, like, it's super easy to read map, like, all the laws are easily explained. If you go to Florida Senate website, like, it's word vomit on the page. Like how, how, do you, how can people educate themselves? What are the resources? To educate yourself on the law in general, um, you know, I think it's a tough thing to do, right? Because lawyers, they go through four years of college, mm -hmm. three years of law school, internships or residencies, yeah. and then they're practicing for a number of years, and they still call it the practice of law because you never really quite get it. Um, so my advice would be just like if you had um, an ailment or an illness, you probably wouldn't try and educate yourself online. You'd go to a doctor, um, same thing with an accountant. I think any kind of services professional, um, I would really steer people away from trying to do it themselves. Yep. That's just my opinion. Yep, I, I tell people the same, like, don't do it yourself, like, get a team behind you. Um, here's one thing we'll try to talk about if you can, and this probably be like our last thing. Miranda rights versus a warning. I, I feel like the Supreme Court changed some things up where like, beforehand, if you weren't read your Miranda rights, um, it was considered a violation of your Fifth Amendment rights, and then you could kind of it could be either admissible in court or like you could sue the police officer on the back end, but that's no longer the case anymore. Yeah. Explain that a little. Sure. There, there's been a lot of confusion yeah. lately. Um, to make it clear to everyone, you still have the Fifth Amendment right um, to remain silent. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's called Miranda warnings. So Miranda rights, Miranda warnings, synonymous. Same thing. Okay. okay? Your rights, you know, obviously the right to remain silent, the right to an attorney, uh, all of those rights are put into a warning. Yeah. So that, that's what the officers have. They usually have a little card they read from. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a cop, we used to have to keep it in our pocket. We read it that way; you get it right every time. Um, typically, it's not a good idea to talk to the police. If you have the rights for a reason, invoke yep. them. Okay, most of the time. Um, but as far as the civil liabilities, yes, that changed. So now, federally, 
Um, from my understanding of the recent case law, it is harder now to um, civilly sue a law enforcement officer if they don't give you the rights. Yeah. However, it has nothing to do, nothing has changed with the criminal trial admissibility of the, your statements. All right, so they still must read you that, and then if you say something that incriminates you... Right, so exactly, they have to read you the rights. If uh, Miranda applies in, in three situations, the three prong test, right? Mm -hmm. Custodial interrogation of a government official. Okay, so you gotta be in custody, yep. you have to be interrogated, questioned, right. and a uh, government official, that's easy as a cop. So yep. obviously that, that one's checked up. Um, so if those three prongs are met, Miranda must be read. The right. remedy is, and that's where a lot of people get it twisted, right? Because the remedy isn't a dismissal of the case. The remedy is suppression of your statements. Mm -hmm. So if you make a full confession, that's getting tossed. But if you don't say anything and they yep. don't question you, there's really nothing for that. Yeah. Yep. That's what's up in the class. I was like, look, you can work with the police if you want to, but like, you and I are not trained to have talked to them. Like, let's not let's not pretend like we are. Let's exactly. Please stop talking right then and there. Good advice. Um, because. <laughs> We've seen, we've seen what happens otherwise. All right, for you, where can people where can people best find you? You're here in Orlando. How can they reach you? Where how can they contact you? Where are you located? Yeah, we're right downtown, right on Colonial. The best way to reach us is our website, gans.law, yep. G-A-N-S dot law, yep. or you can just Google Gans Law and we'll pop up. Yep. Um, I'll have all his social links uh, somewhere in this video, links and descriptions and all that good stuff too. Um, his social will be tagged in it too. You can go follow him there. Um, literally, like you said, just Google him and he will pop up here in Orlando. He is the first person I always call. Before we go, let's try to talk a legal service, like a legal shield or like a carry insurance type of thing, if you can, versus hiring somebody. I always say, I'm like, get both. Like, mm -hmm. as soon as I call, you know, carry insurance, I'm probably call Brandon right after. I'm like, hey, can you come here? Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about that? I mean, insurance is usually a good idea, yep. right? Especially if you're carrying, you want to protect yourself to get into a situation. Um, the more protection, the better. Literally. So I, I totally agree. If you have it, if you can get insurance, great. I'd also talk to a private lawyer about it. Yep, and I mean, I'm not gonna specify one, but they're literally like $10 to like $20 a month. They're like a couple hundred bucks annually. And then you get yourself a private lawyer right on top of that. And now you got a full team behind you. Brandon, this is fun. I think people are really gonna get benefit out of it. If y'all have questions, comments, DM me, text me, all of it. And then uh, maybe we get Brandon back on to answer some of those deep questions in depth. You know, maybe we do it live one day and we let y'all ask live questions and that can be super fun too. Um, but for now, that is all you're gonna get, so thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. And that's all for today.